Well, welcome to the big board. So tonight we're uh, attempting to have a look at uh, Bonaparte in Italy and I read the rules, uh, I don't know, maybe three weeks ago and did a trip and traveled and did work and stuff and played other games and now I'm back trying to work out what the hell all these notes are and reading through the rules and uh, double checking the campaign rules to uh, make sure that we have kind of got things set up correctly. So a couple of things that strike me right off the bat here is, uh, once again, you know, OSG systems, Kevin Zucker's games, there's a common theme through many of the, the, the elements in the games, the uh, command initiative aspects, the movement mechanics, the combat mechanics and things like that. So that's all good because it does help you get into the game. Sometimes a little more quickly. Now this is the first of the games that I've played at the most zoomed out level. I forget what the scale is here. I think it's a couple of days a turn or something like that versus one day a turn at the operation, what I would call the operational level. And of course the NLB stuff is all down at the tactical level, even though it says it's not, it really is. Um, from my perspective anyway. So uh, we have this situation here where New system for me, a few tweaks on it, and, and this is a fairly old game too. It's been around for probably longer than I have, and uh, it's certainly showing its uh, obtuseness in the rules, uh, the wording and whatnot, and, and there's a lot of shit spread all over the place, and I'm, I'm, having, I'm having some challenges. Primary challenges are uh, built around, I'm just looking for the scale here, let's see if I can see it and tell you what it is, I, I forget. It, the turn se sequence is up there, it looks like it's two days a turn. Um, excuse me, <coughs> is it scale in here somewhere? Anyway, the map. Biggest issue I have is uh, trying to uh, adjust to this a concept of attrition, uh, you know, uh, Napoleonic forces moving over a two day period, you would imagine that by the time the lead units arrived where they were going and were headed off for, you know, uh, let's say uh, a day later, <laughs> that everyone would have kind of caught up, right? So there's this, seems to be this somewhat artificial mechanic for March attrition with a fairly uh, substantial and uh, wacky little table here to work out march distances and what the impact is on those and uh, how many APs you have and whether or not you're foraging and the size of the force then you know rolls over and then it gives you uh, points of a uh, strength point to lose point eight of a strength point is 800 men uh, so, you know, we, we've got to go try and work out all this, these bits and pieces for every force we move, which has a corresponding force here, which is a whole nother thing. Uh, so if I move this stack of guys or this to Bonaparte, he has one unit with him and they have two steps and he, they move, may move a certain distance and basically <coughs> at this level, with this many units, you know, we're not going to lose. We're not going to lose very much. So, we've got to kind of work our way through that. Anyway, I'll be I'll be back with a, a little more detail on how this all hangs together. But first, I got to get my. You know, I'll, I guess what I'm trying to say here is I'm, I'm going to get through a turn, and then we'll we'll address some. Uh, you know, work out what what really matters here, because there are. Well, let's talk about this. So here we've got. A general who's on the board, a general who's on the board, you couldn't see that, uh, with two units, and that's the strength. So this guy's got two strength points, this guy's got three or four, and they're on the board. And we're not supposed to see them, you know, who, who who's what and where, and who has what. I can't put these units on the board because they're not full strength, they've got to stay over here. So anytime I move a unit, I've got to, or a force, uh, with the general, I have to uh, assess, what, uh, look at what's, what he has, 
glance over at my stack and uh, and work out whether or not he's the guy I want to move to engage in the combat. So it's a, it's kind of a, a, a there's a lot of scanning of the board going on. I, once I uh, start looking at attrition, I'm checking out morale tracks and I'm looking at the um, the uh, what's I call it the AP track, how many uh, activation points I have. And there's kind of stuff scattered all over the place. You know, I've got uh, AP tracks, and we've got the turn track, and they've got their uh, reinforcement and AP track, and I've got these two things over here, and then there's a reinforcement schedule, and that's where things set up, and then there's the map with a smattering of units, all of which would technically all be like that. So if I was playing this game, I'd have these all face down. And... You know, we're just not going to do that because it's just bullshit, right? I'm not going to flip everything over every time and work out where where stuff is, and that's one of the biggest flaws with this game, with this whole all of these games from OSG, is it has this concept of hidden movement, but it doesn't it doesn't work very well, and you really have to use the little sleds. And I'm not going to drop a couple hundred bucks to play these games just to get some sleds on the board. And I think it looks unsightly anyway. So. There's, so there's some of that uh, sort of uh, interaction, user interface stuff that is just there. But there are some cool concepts here. So the, the idea, as I was talking about before, of attrition, you know, at this scale with the number of forces we have on the board right now, we're not really having to worry too much about attrition, but we are having to take into consideration our center of operations, which can have a line pretty much, you know, up to 100 hexes long, uh, back to a supply source. And uh, you know, there's another one over here uh, on the far left-hand side of the board, which is basically Milan uh, to our left. Uh, over, We go that way, we go to Milan. And so I'll have this, uh, this, this center of operations, and then 28 movement points is my dispatch distance, which is, you know, I guess in essence the... The, uh, the, the, as far as the forces uh, we can go to kind of move uh, supply and push orders and all the sort of fun stuff. Uh, so it, it's not terribly restrictive, but it is a somewhat of a tether. Uh, it's pretty easy to get 28 movement points. We'll let you get pretty much anywhere on the board. If I put my, I could put the center of operations actually, you know, a little bit further up, maybe here if I wanted to, or even here would be an ideal location because that splits uh, the river, this lake, Lake Garda, either side. That's probably an ideal, ideal spot, which is where we'll probably put it for the time being. Uh, so, you know, interesting tactical problem that we we are faced with. We've got a reduce this uh, unit here in Mantova and, and uh, crush the siege here. We've got to uh, fend off uh, attacks that are going to come from multiple sources. So there's a lot of juggling around. Every time we juggle around, we may incur attrition if we have too many units and they move too far. We've got other forces over here as well. So there's a lot going on. Having a role for attrition for every unit uh, over a two-day span is kind of funky to me. I could see it if it was, you know, uh, uh, the Carthage games, Rise of the Roman Republic and Carthage, I think it's just called Carthage. Uh, you know, you're moving, you're, you're playing over the course of a year and you're moving one or two times and so you're moving for 90 days and you've got ancient force, not a mo more modern force of Napoleonic uh, for, uh, units. So, you know, the whole straggler attrition concept is kind of kind of whack here, and I'm not sure what to do about it. I'm not sure what impact it's going to have on the game. I don't know that we're going to get to uh, the situation where we might have 40 factors. Um, yeah, well, I'm just looking here to see what the result would be. You know, if you roll badly, uh, you could lose two steps. I, well, where do those steps go and how do we get them back? I, I get maybe I'm missing something here. But uh, anyway, there's a few things going on that are uh, a little funky with this system. And I may, uh, perhaps I uh, should have chosen uh, Habit of Victory first because it's a more refined system and I don't know if they cross pollinate. I almost pulled the trigger and only dropped a hundred and some bucks to get the uh, uh, Bonaparte turns east or whatever it's called. The, the uh, Eastern Front thing. So I'm glad I haven't yet because this is uh, 
already becoming a little bit of a challenge for me. Uh, conceptually, I'm dealing with, I'm trying to put the puzzle pieces together after being away from it for a couple of weeks. So we'll stick with it. We'll get this turn done. We'll see what happens and we'll uh, kind of get a feel for the game. We'll play a couple of turns and and if it starts to feel right, we'll, uh, we'll keep going. Talk to you soon.